Hello, everyone, and welcome to our track guide for this week. This week, we're at Watkins Glen. We're using the full row course with the boot section. And let's go ahead and take an onboard lap here. And as we cross start finish, we head towards turn one, which is a downhill braking zone. Use a little bit of the curb on the right, and then use the apron on the left to get maximum launch out of the corner and head up through the S's. One thing to note is that basically every corner at this track has banking to it, which is going to make it particularly in line sensitive. If you miss your apex, you're going to likely lose lots of time. Towards the inner loop, we're also called the bus stop. This is a part of the track where you can gain a lot of time if you really hustle the car through. The outer loop, again, keeping it to the right-hand side, using the banking through the chute, and we head towards the boot section. This is laces. Again, lots of banking there that we want to make sure we use. Heading towards the toe. Staying to the right-hand side of the track, being careful to avoid those curves, as we'll talk about later. Now on the back stretch of the boot section, we head towards the heel. This is a particularly easy corner to overcook your tires, so perhaps back up your braking zone a little bit to make the corner. One thing to note about turn 9 here is that this corner is a little bit off camber. The corner kind of goes away from you in terms of the banking. Through turn 10, really hustling the car, and through turn 11, using all the run-up area as possible, getting as close to that tire barrier as we can to complete our full lap here at Watkins Glen. One thing I mentioned in the onboard video was that there are some curves that you want to avoid in particular. And here we can see one example in the toe. These are black and white striped curves. They're much higher compared to the track. If you drive over these, it's going to unsettle the car. You may likely spin out. Here they are again in turn 8. And you can find them on the inside again here in turns 9, 10, and 11. So be sure to avoid those. If you hit them, it will compromise your lap time. The inner loop is going to be the best opportunity to make a pass because this section of the track is the longest time you're on full throttle. You're able to utilize the slipstream or the toe, the car in front. Using push to pass will also help you pull alongside another car. Car makes a move to driver's right. He's heading towards the inner loop and is able to complete the pass successfully. So you can pass on the right there, but additionally, you can also pass on the left. Oftentimes what will happen is a car will defend on the right to get the inside line in the corner. But the car on the left maintains some momentum. You can dive in through the corner and take the position. Now be careful on exit. If you do cross this grass section here, you will get a slowdown penalty. When in doubt for the bus stop, slow in and fast out. You also want to choose your battles wisely. You don't want to go too wide through the bus stop you're better off just conceding the corner and trying to fight back the next lap. Our next passing opportunity is turn one. So getting a good launch of turn 11, using a little bit of push to pass, and a little bit of an outbreaking maneuver, you can easily make the pass using the inside line, using that bank corner to your advantage. I mentioned choosing your battles, and this is a really good representation of why you can afford to concede positions. You can easily get them back. Heading towards the inner loop, there's quite a gaggle of cars. This is almost like the Talladega of road courses, thanks to the strength of this slipstream. Because of the bank corners and the higher cornering speed, it's almost going to feel like an oval in terms of the aero wash in front of you. So it's going to be really important that you set up your car to handle well in traffic, whether it's having more front downforce or perhaps playing with some of your in-car adjustments. More than likely, you'll be adjusting the front ARB. Softening the front ARB it's going to handle better in traffic and provide more front end grip. You'll see here heading towards turn 9, the car on board here actually feels a little bit of an aero wash even at these slow speeds. It gets wide and loses quite a bit of time. There are no special pit in rules. Simply just hold your car to the right side of the track. Call out your pit in if necessary over voice chat. However, for pit exit, just be aware there's a small dip in the road. And if you have too much throttle or too much wheel input, you could spin the car around. And that's our basic track guide for Watkins Glen this week. If you'd like to read more information about the IndyCar at Watkins Glen, check below in the description for a link to the iRacing IndyCar weekly form thread, as well as an invite link to the IndyCar community discord.